What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Nick here and in today's um, video, I'm going to show you guys how you can catch your first shore based striper um, all the way from setups to lines to lures to the tides, the weathers and everything. So let's get right into it. Okay, number one is the setup. And for the setup today, I have a Daiwa Revros. Um, I'm not sure how well the focus is I'll pop up like a photo or something. It's a Daiwa Revros 2500 size, really good reel. I used to use it a bunch until I got the Shimano Stratic, which I'll probably go over in a different video, but I have no line on it as you guys can current, currently see. And I have a, or not brand new spool, but the old spool of some line, some eight pound uh, braid that I have for striper lines. Like main lines, I would recommend anywhere from six to up to 15 pounds if you're fishing in a like inshore area, that would be recommended. So here I have my eight pound J braid, as you can see. Okay, so here I have an Ugly Stick Ultralight GX2. It's a seven foot rod. Uh, ugly sticks are really cheap, durable, strong rods. I already went over them in a different video. You guys can check that out. You can check here, right here. Um, yeah, really durable rods. I've been using them for striper. I've only been using these rods for spinning. They're really good rods. They hold up really well. Um, I would use like from ultralight to a medium for inshore um, is probably the best. So what I um, did here, it's a two piece rod. I just snapped it together. And then what you're gonna wanna do is with your reel, it has a reel handle. And what you gotta do is just screw it on like this. Make sure it's really tight because you don't want your reel to fall out um, while you're fishing, that would be really bad. Or if you had a fish, you don't want it falling out. And so when you have that, you're gonna open, this is called your bail if you don't know. Um, you're gonna open up your bail. And then once you're, you've opened up your bail, you're gonna wanna grab, grab your line and run it through the front of the rod. So you can just throw that on the ground. Um, make sure your bail is open. If not, you're gonna have problems. I'll show you why in a second. Um, you're gonna wanna run your line through each guide all the way down. I'll fast forward. Okay, so what I'm doing now, if you guys don't know, I'm putting the line on, showing you guys how to put the line on. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, let me just get one with line on it already. But usually those are crappy lines. Um, those break really easily. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend putting your own line or going to the tackle store. But if you do do it yourself, it's not that hard. All you got to do is run it through, make sure your bail's open. And then you're going to want to tie a knot around the reel. Um, I'm not sure what is the best knot, uh, the knots that I use. I just use like a uni knot. I'll link a video for that. Um, I use a uni knot. I'll just tie that and tighten it and then clip off any end, any end part. I'll just clip it off and so I'll tighten it down and then I'll bring it down to the reel and then I'll just grab a pair of nail clippers and snip whatever tag is hanging off. You want to make sure that's tight. Some people like to use tape, but as long as you have a bunch of line, you're not going to worry about like having a fish take all your line out most of the time. So, um, yeah, I would say it's important, but you don't need to go super into detail about it. So once you have that, you can close it. And the reason I like to have the bail or the reason you have to have the bail open when you're spooling your line up, um, this isn't the best way to do it too. This is just the way I do it. And that's like easier for me than that has worked. Um, Taco stores probably do a better job, but this works. Um, so you're gonna start reeling and make sure it's tight. You're gonna wanna grab the line like this. Okay, so now as you can see, um, it's starting to bring the line in. And then um, sometimes like the line just flying off the spool, um, which doesn't usually happen, but because there's no line holders on it, it's just flying right off. Normally, um, I would just stick a pencil in between the spool and clip it with your feet together and that'll just roll. Um, Cause you wanna make sure that the line's tight to the spool so you can fit more on it. This is 300 yards by the way, it's a 2,500 size reel. But yeah, um, but I'm just gonna fast forward all the me putting on the line. 
you also want to make sure that um, the line you're holding it like this or some way so that you can make sure the lines like even and wrapped and it gets like wrapped tight around the spool okay so I just finished spooling up uh, all the line on here there's not a lot because I have used this before but you're not gonna want to you're gonna want to reel until you have um, a bit of line here or unless you're unless you're completely done then you'll just reel up all the way but if you want to get set up right away then um, you're gonna like not want to reel all the way so you want to have some line right here so you can um, tie your leader on uh, the spool's not very full because I've used it before um, normally it'll go to the end the edge you don't want to go too far if not you'll have some other issues um, but yeah so we're all spooled up now. So now we're going to get into leaders. For the leaders, um, I'm not really sure what's best. Some people say use a lighter leader. Um, I just use a heavier leader than my main line um, just because I don't want to like lose any fish. Um, so, and usually if I get snagged, the main line will break. Like it'll just break at the leader, um, not the main line. So I won't be losing much main line. Um, so for leaders, I like to go from like 10 to 25 pounds, um, based on your line. Like, let's say you have 15 pound line, then you probably want to use like a 25 pound leader. Um, just so like the knots are better, but I'm using like currently, uh, I think 15 pounds. I'm not going to, okay. So here's my leader. It's not J braid. I just put it on the spool. Um, most leaders would work. I don't really have any recommendations because I haven't tried out that many leaders. Um, and I don't think my leader, this kind of leader is available on like in the US or on Amazon. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is just take some out. For leaders, I like to use like um, two, to, like three feet, about three feet a leader. So normally I'll just leave it on there just in case I don't tie um, like a good knot then I can just cut it. I don't need to like waistline. Um, yeah, so I'll, right now I'm just gonna tie a uni knot. It connects your main line to your leader line. Um, so I'll link, I'll link that because that'll take too long for me to show you. And I'm sure there's plenty of videos on that. Okay, um, so I just finished tying the leader knot. I'm just going to cut off the tags now, but I want to go over why using a leader, um, especially for stripers, is so important. So they're pretty smart fish, and if they see like your um, thick, or if they see your braided line, they'll be like, oh, what's that rope? Um, so they may be like more scared if you don't have a leader line. And it's also just better because it's heavier, and your knots will tend not to slip as much if you tie braids straight to your lure. Um, I've had a lot of problems where the line will just slip. Um, if you guys know how to avoid that, then that's fine. But um, I, just because the fish are, it's just clear. So the fish aren't going to see it. They're not going to suspect it as much. Um, and you have like a heavier line, like a heavier backup. It, absor like it absorbs the shock more, I guess. Um, not too sure about the details of that, but I just ha always have had more luck using a leader. I'm not sure if it matters with other fish. But for striper, it's definitely made an impact. Um, so I just tied my leader knot. Um, now I'm gonna, so that's about measured. It's a good knot, so now I can just snip it straight off. And so once I've tied my leader knot, um, I don't know if, how well you guys can see that. It's pretty thin, so it'll go in and out of the guides. These are called guides. It'll go in and out pretty easily, um, really easily. And so right now, I'm gonna show you guys a couple lures that I like to use. Um, it's all based on your setup. So, so for any beginners, um, these are called jig heads. They are like weighted hooks, so you can cast your lure farther. Um, this is a lure, typical lure. Um, I got two of my favorite lures for um, the Cordomadera Creek or just any inshore striper. Um, so what I have here is a 3 8 ounce jig head. This is usually the heaviest I like to go because again, the fish do get spooked if it's too big or something. Um, so when you're um, putting the lure through, you got to hook it through and then I'll link a video for this too um, because it's not that easy. Once you've done it a bunch of times, it'll get easier though. Um, 
So once you have it through, this was not a great job, but it'll look something like this. You have the head and the lure um, is like that. And so you can just tie it on. So I just like to use either a clinch knot, like a fisherman's knot or a uni knot. Um, just goes straight, straight through. I'll link a video for those knots too. Not too hard. Um, so just tie it through. And once you have it tied up, make sure you wet it too before you cinch it um, because when there's there's a bunch of heat when you tighten it um, so the line can get weaker so normally I just like to wet it I just like to wet it so that's easier uh, so that there's less chance of it breaking um, this is one of my favorite lures for the creek or just inshore striper fishing it's the three inch Z man uh, minnow Z it's a really good lure um, really elastic so it won't break at all I've never had one break even with fish um, with sharp teeth like halibut these do not break. The action is pretty good. Um, but another thing I have if the fish are not biting are the striper stalkers, three inch striper stalkers. They're pretty skinny, so they don't seem like they're three um, inch. They're not big, they're way smaller profile lure. Um, really good for finicky, like finesse fishing when the striper just aren't biting. These work really well. I've caught tons of striper on these. These will be available. Um, if you guys want some, just email me or DM me on Instagram. Make sure to check out the Instagram. Um, yeah, these guys, three inches. We have a bunch of colors coming available. Just let me know. Um, one fourth ounce jig head works best with these. Um, just really great lures when the fish aren't biting or like really finicky. Um, one of my favorites. So yeah, that's the whole setup. So uh, once you have your setup, you're gonna wanna make sure that the tides are good. And usually my favorite tides are like two hours before high tide or two hours after high tide. Especially when the water is moving, the fish tend to be more active because it forces the bait to get moving. So the fish are looking for those bait fish. And so they're up shallow just looking for uh, some food to eat. Um, so those are my favorite tides. Any, any kind of weather um, usually works. The time of the day. Striper, I've had luck like with all times. Sometimes, sometimes if you get them in the morning, they'll be jumping and stuff. Um, yeah. So those are just a few of my tips. Um, yeah. Another thing is you want to set your drag. So I forgot to go over that. Um, your drag is like how hard, how much, I'm not sure what the exact definition is, but it's like how hard the fish can pull your line out. And so usually it's really important that you set it because if it's too loose and a fish bites and you try to set the hook like this, the it normally won't set because there's no, there's nothing to like um, tight. There's, it's not tight enough to like hold the fish. Um, and you don't want it to be too tight. If not, you won't be able to like feel the full fight of the fish. I mean, you can have it tight and you'll probably bring fish in every time like that. You probably won't lose any, but I just like, that's, that's one of my favorite parts about fishing is like this drag sound when the fish run with your lure, it's a lot more exciting. So you're going to want it about like that. I mean, you guys can, play around with it but this is usually my favorite setting um so i might have missed a few things but that is about everything you no need to know about striper fishing um inshore striper fishing if you guys if i forgot anything if i missed out on anything just drop a comment below if you enjoyed this video please drop a like share subscribe we guys are we are almost at 150 subs when this video drops i think we'll be more than 100 We'll be at more than 150 subscribers, but I'm trying to get to 200 before February. So if you guys like this video, um, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for all the recent support. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys want to see more of this or anything, just drop it in the comments below and I will see you on the next one.